And would you pray with me? Lord, we do come together today to continue to proclaim the incredible news. Be with us, guide our proclamation, that we may look to you in the life of you. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So what do you do on the Sunday after Easter? I wonder about that every year, and this year particularly so. I mean, last week was quite spectacular. And by the way, thank you to everyone who helped out. All sorts of people helping with Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and musicians, and instrumentalists, and, and, and altar guilds, and flowers, and people cooking breakfast, and egg hunts. I mean, it was just a marvelous, marvelous celebration of the incredible truth that Christ is risen. But that makes this week all the harder. And you've got to admit, it's just going to be a little bit anticlimactic. What do you do on the week after Easter? Well, let me suggest a couple of things. First, we continue the celebration. We continue the celebration. If the Easter event is true, and I believe that it is, we need to celebrate that for a good number of weeks. I mean, we gathered last week to proclaim the news that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. We proclaim that God is now involved in human history, and God is working out his purposes, and nothing can stop the power of God. And I think we are to celebrate that for a good number of weeks. This news is so spectacular that I think a one-day celebration doesn't do it. No. We need to celebrate it for a good number of weeks on end. In fact, I think sometimes uh, we, we've got a little catching up to some other cultures do a better job of that. I think in Hispanic culture, Easter is to be celebrated for a good number of days. I've been told that in Cajun culture, this is a great time of year for crawfish boils and ongoing celebrations. We need to figure out how to do that. How do we keep celebrating? I mean, do we have crawfish boils or maybe some more Easter egg hunts? Or maybe just yell every Sunday, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. How do we keep going with the celebration? In fact, it, 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 it seems to me, you know, we, we prepare for Easter with six weeks of Lent. Uh, Lent is the six weeks prior to Easter, and, and it's a time of penitence, reflection, and, and focusing in on the cross of Christ. And by the way, I love the Lent season. Very, very important time of year. But it seems to me if we spend six weeks preparing for Easter, shouldn't we also spend six weeks celebrating Easter? Huh? Well, we ought to spend at least six weeks celebrating and proclaiming and, and, and having just a marvelous time. One of my goals is that we celebrate so well that the Tyler community asks, what's with those Lutherans? Huh? <laughs> and our response is, we're a resurrection people. Huh? We're claiming the life of the risen Christ. And by the way, that is not a new idea on my part. That actually is church tradition church tradition for hundreds of years. These six weeks after Easter are referred to in the church here as the Easter season. And they are to be simply and cleanly a proclamation and celebration. Triumphant music, proclamation of Jesus' victory. In fact, we've actually got a little liturgical lesson here. We've actually got a candle to remind us of that. You, see, you all see this, this big candle that we have in the church. It's called a Paschal or Easter candle. We light it for the six weeks during the Easter season. And it's meant to be a liturgical reminder that this is a time to celebrate. You see the candle shining? Celebrate. <laughs> because this, this is a time to proclaim incredible news. Jesus is risen. What do we do on the Sunday after Easter? First, we continue the second, the celebration. And then second, second, we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. I think Easter is a call to discipleship. That Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, and now he is calling us into newness of life. Life cannot be the same anymore. We need to follow Jesus. I think too, much, too often in, in our culture, Easter has become kind of a, it, it's an observation, it's a holiday, it's part of our tradition, it's a great day to tell, to tell some good old stories. Uh, but that's not Easter. That's not enough. Easter is not just an observance. It is a lifestyle. It's a way of life. It is life. It is the news that Jesus has risen. And the risen Christ now is among us, making all things new. And Jesus calls for us, not just to observe that, but to participate in that. We are called into the life that this living Savior brings. In fact, that's the message of today's gospel. Did, did you listen to, to the gospel reading from John that I read just a few minutes? I love that reading. John begins by continuing the Easter story. He tells about Jesus appearing to all the disciples and Thomas. And then right at the end, the last two verses, Jesus points to us and says, All these are written that you may believe and have life in Jesus' name. 
These stories are not told, John says, just to entertain you, just to fill in some ancient history. These are told that you might believe that Jesus is the living Christ and that you might find life in his name. Easter calls us to decide to follow Jesus, to turn our lives over to Jesus again and again and again. There's a simple little song uh, that gets sung in church sometimes. It's a song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Have any of you ever sung that? It, it, it's a kind of a gospel song. Uh, it gets used at Bible camps and things. It's a simple little song. Uh, it, it simply repeats itself. It says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Just a, 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 a short little song. I got the history of that song a few years ago. And, and, and it fascinated me. Back when I first started out uh, in the ministry, that was in the days before CCLI licenses and easy ways of getting uh, permission to, to publish songs in your bulletin. And so if you ever wanted to print a song that wasn't in your hymnal, you had to go through all sorts of hoops. Well, we had a special celebration coming up in our church. And, and some of the members loved this song, I Have Decided Jesus. So uh, uh, I, I wanted to get permission to use it on that celebration. And so I found the song and, 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 and uh, publisher, and I called the publisher and said, would you give us uh, permission to print it for one Sunday? And the publisher said, well, we can't do that. We don't hold the copyrights. That the copyrights are actually held by the widow of the, uh, the man who wrote it. But we have her phone number. If you want to call her, that's fine. So I gave you the phone number. And I called the lady and said, you know, we want to use this song. Is that okay? And, and it turned out just a marvelous lady, elderly lady, just delightful. And we had this, this, this marvelous conversation. Uh, and, and she tells me, yeah, sure, please go ahead and use the song. And then she said, do you want to know how my husband came to write it? I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to know that. She said, they had a friend uh, who, was, uh, who was alcoholic, been a heavy drinker for years, just uh, years of, of, of hard, hard drinking, literally was drinking himself into the grave. And they were, they, they had talked to him and prayed for him and, and, and worked on him and just kept right on drinking. Uh, and, and finally the man hit bottom and, and decided it was time to, time to change. And so he, uh, he began going to AA, uh, started going to AA and, 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 and struggled. You know, I think the AA program says it's, it's, you take it a day at a time. I mean, he literally took it an hour at a time just trying to get himself sober. Also became very active in the church. Uh, came to realize that the higher power that could restore him to life and sanity was, was Jesus. And so he got very active in the church, very active in AA, was working to, to straighten his life up. Well, this composer and man were, were literally going to an AA meeting one night. Uh, and just before they got into the meeting, uh, a couple of his old drinking buddies happened to be coming down the street. And, and, and they saw the recovering man and they greeted him. Ah, it's good to see you. We haven't seen you for a long time. They said, we're going out for a few beers. You want to join us? And the composer says you can see it in the man's face. He wanted those beers more than anything. He would probably have ripped off his arm for those beers. And you could just see the, 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 the struggle and the pain. And what do I do? And finally the man shook his head and said, No, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. And he turned around and walked into the AA meeting. And the composer was so moved that he got went home that night and wrote the simple little song, I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. And I've come to love that song. It's a, it's a simple little song, but what a beautiful statement of discipleship that Jesus calls us to new life in himself. And, and we are to decide to follow Jesus again and again and again on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. We throw in our lot with Jesus. What do we do on the Sunday after Easter? We celebrate. And we follow Jesus into newness of life. Let's conclude by singing together the song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Would you please stand as we sing together that song?